Welcome to Monet Cafe. Oh, I'm so excited to bring you this video. If you've ever been interested in pastel painting, you're gonna love this. I have taken in this one video every method I've ever used for creating my own pastel surface. You know those papers can get expensive, so making your own papers uh, can save you a lot of money. So not only have I made eight different methods of creating them, I've painted seven different paintings in this video. So you're going to get a wealth of information, not only for all the different products. I don't want you guys to spend a lot of money, waste a lot of money on things you might not want to use. So this video will give you that information and you'll also get a lot of pastel instruction as I create the paintings. So let's get started. Welcome friends and visitors in Monet Cafe. I'm bringing you a lesson today that is kind of like a you asked for it. I get so many questions about creating your own pastel papers and surfaces and what products to use that I thought I would take many of the products that I've used in the past and put them all together in one video to compare so that you can see what might work for you and what you might want to try. All right, I hope this is a practical video. Since creating the intro to this video, I actually decided to add a total of eight different surfaces that you can make homemade. And just so you know, these don't have to be done on watercolor paper. Uh, they could be done on any type of board that takes water, such as mat board, gator board, you know, whatever works for your purposes. Uh, but watercolor paper is pretty inexpensive. So these are the eight different techniques and products that I'll be using throughout the duration of this video. And I will be creating seven um, paintings as a final. One of these I just would not use again. So there's a little, um, um, I don't know, mystery to this. So you're gonna have to wait to the end of the video and see which one of these uh, is not a good choice to use. But anyway, so join me now as I show all of these different techniques and create paintings from them and give you feedback on what my favorites are. So hopefully this will help everyone to be able to save some money in creating pastel surfaces. All right, here we go. I've got my paper divided um, with the blue painter's tape, as I mentioned, and I love these little dishes. Um, I think they're, they're from Walmart, but I think it's a Pioneer Woman. I think that's the name brand, but they're very practical for me when I'm doing my artistic experimentation. <laughs> um, but for this first one, this example is going to be using watercolor and clear gesso. I'm going to use this um, foam brush to basically just wet the surface of the watercolor paper. Um, it basically just creates a, um, a wet surface to apply it to, which makes like a wet on wet type of effect. And uh, it goes on more fluid than if I just did the watercolor before adding water. See how that looks so translucent and pretty? So I'm just putting on the watercolor, you could pick whatever color you want. I pick different colors just to uh, be spontaneous and have some variety in my resulting paintings. Um, but you could pick whatever color you want. Now, um, I am, what am I doing now? <laughs> um, I'm going to let that watercolor uh, dry right there because I can't apply the clear gesso on top of that. Um, so now the next product I'll be using is the regular gesso. Like I mentioned, some of you guys have questions. Can you just use regular gesso, like clear gesso? No, you can't because it doesn't have any grit to it, okay? Um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna apply uh, or add to the clear gesso, I mean the regular gesso. Oh, it gets so confusing. Just some gouache. I get all these nice little samples from Arteza. This is some metallic gouache. And then I'm gonna add this dry pumice, okay? Dry pumice um, is basically like sand. And so I'm just gonna add a little bit of this little, I'm still experimenting here too. I mean, that's like a quarter teaspoon there. Um, with the gouache, the metallic gouache, the metallic gouache has a little bit of a sheen to it, but it really doesn't um, really show that much of a sheen when I finish it. I add a little more because it's a little uh, dull. Um, so it ends up being kind of like a little lavender. Um, now, I don't want to overcomplicate things, but you can tint your paper before you add these surfaces. I just didn't in this uh, particular video. So everything I'm doing is kind of on the surface. Um, now, here it is, and it's got the gesso, 
not the clear gesso, the regular gesso, which has no grit to it, with the tint, you could use whatever product you want to tint it, acrylic, watercolor, gouache, and the dry medium pumice, okay, like the sand. We added our sand to it because, I was testing it there, because the regular gesso doesn't have any grit to it. Okay, next is the Color Fix Primer. This product is made by Art Spectrum. It has the sand in it already, and you can get it multiple ways. I have this color here, it's called Australian Gray, um, but it comes in various colors, and it also comes in clear, you know, like you don't have to have a color to it. So um, I love this product, and uh, you'll see this is one I end up really liking too. Okay, so it's already got the sand in this one. So you're just basically painting it on, and it is a little bit less expensive than buying um, some of the sanded papers to make it yourself. Again, I wanna reinforce that it doesn't have to be on watercolor paper. These can be done on other surfaces. Um, now this is the fine pumice gel, and I have my little instructions on the top of that. You wanna do one to one, whatever color you're using to the pumice gel. Now this is the um, kind of the go-to technique for artist Rita Kirkman. She, to me, she's like the inventor of this. I, I really think she is. But she basically uses the golden gel medium fine pumice gel combined with this beautiful golden uh, fluid acrylic. It's called uh, quinacridone gold. Now you'll see why it's called quinacridone gold when I put it on the paper. It, it looks kind of brown there. Oh my goodness, it's the most luminous, beautiful color. And uh, Rita Kirkman uses this for her beautiful animal paintings and landscape paintings too, but I just particularly love her paintings of like cows and animals and things. So, oh, see how that goes on? She recommends using a foam brush. And I've tried this technique before and there's a little finesse to it um, because it dries kind of quickly. I work, this is a small area I'm using, so it was pretty um, achievable. But um, I basically just spread it on with the foam brush, trying to get an even coat. Um, it is kind of thin. You don't want to put this on too, too thick. And it makes the most beautiful golden, almost like an underpainting surface for whatever, whatever painting you're doing. I love golden underpaintings. All right, so there are the first four that I'm doing. And uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't finish because remember that watercolor I put down? That's just watercolor. It doesn't have any grit to it. You can't do pastel paintings on that, or if you did, you wouldn't get any layers. So now this is why the clear liquid gesso um, you can use on top of watercolor to add that grit. Now, if you did this test yourself, put a little of the clear gesso in your fingers. You can feel the sand in it. And so that's why you're able to do a pastel painting on these. I don't know who discovered that about clear gesso, but I'm so glad they did. It's very cool. Now here I'm just doing a sound test and it's more by feel for me, but you can kind of hear how gritty these surfaces are. And uh, as I do the paintings, I will also share which ones um, suit themselves best for pastel painting. Now for this one, I thought I'd actually lay the products in the squares. Um, this is a golden pastel ground. This is golden, wait for it to focus, acrylic ground for pastels. This is golden coarse molding paste and golden micaceous iron oxide. Are you getting the idea that golden makes a lot of products we can use for creating pastel papers? That's awesome. All right, so the first one is the golden pastel ground. It's basically just like a little liquid, kind of similar to the golden um, fine pumice gel. And I've got a choice here. I could use various products to tint this with, but I think I decided to use the acrylic ink. I love acrylic ink, There's, it's so beautiful. And again, I could put this acrylic ink on the paper, it actually would come out much more bright, um, more bright than it did in adding it to the, um, the medium. But uh, when I mix it up, that's what I was saying there, you could actually add the acrylic ink first, but I choose to add it to the pastel ground, the golden pastel ground. Um, and I actually, I almost didn't make enough here. I barely have enough to cover the paper. But again, you just, mix it up 
whatever you choose again you could choose the acrylic ink you could choose watercolor you could choose regular acrylic the options are endless with all of this and that's why with this video i wanted to kind of take the mystery out of it because it could get confusing with all the different ways you can do things um, but you just play around and find the ways that suits you best you know so um, it is experimenting but hopefully this will help you guys and know what products you might want to try and you might want to buy um, all right so that's the pastel ground made by golden this is the acrylic ground for pastels um, i didn't well I'll, I'll share my results when i do the painting but um, there's there's some differences to them uh, so anyway i'm going to use just regular watercolor to tint this one with and again i'm showing there i could have put it on the paper um, but i decide to mix it into the uh, acrylic ground for pastels uh, and it does if you choose to do it on the paper it comes out brighter um, and also I might want to mention that you guys if you've been on my channel long you've probably seen I do a lot of watercolor underpaintings if I'm using watercolor paper I'll go ahead and, and start the preliminary painting in watercolor and then just paint clear gesso over it so uh, some of these you could do the same thing but they're not as clear as clear gesso so whatever work you did on the watercolor paper is not going to show through if you use one of these products that's not clear um, but you can always do it this way if you want just tint it with whatever whatever color and whatever product you want to tint it with all right about to get finished up what would that one be number six because we did four before so um yeah that's number six all right now getting ready for number seven I'm choosing to take some of my new pastels, NU pastels, not NEW, they're a harder pastel, and this coarse molding paste. I'm gonna show how you can actually tint your watercolor paper with pastels and uh, just do a little wash over that to blend it in. You, can, you have choices as to how to wash it. You can use water or that alcohol like I just showed you there. Basically the alcohol, um, I like it better. It dries faster and I don't know, it seems to make things flow um, and blend better maybe that's just me um, but anyway doesn't that uh, that pastel turn into a beautiful golden color kind of like the um, golden acrylic I used before the um, uh, quinacridone gold so you know just so many different ways you can do this so I need to let that dry and then I will apply the golden coarse molding paste now another golden product we're going to use this micaceous iron oxide i had learned about this from looking at one of the facebook groups for pastel artists and another artist had shared a painting and she mentioned this product and i was like wow because it's nothing i would have ever thought to use first it looks kind of a dark brown and um uh, i had no idea it had grit to it but the neat thing about this golden micaceous iron oxide is that it sparkles uh, it's got little bits of, I guess, the oxide or something in it. I don't know. But it's it's got a little shimmer and a glitter to it. You can kind of see it in that photo there. All right. Now the new pastel with the alcohol has dried. And I'm going to apply the Golden Coarse Molding Paste. Um, and it is exactly what the name implies. It is very coarse. Um, so I... Uh, I actually had a hard time getting it to dry. It was like so thick and pasty. Um, but anyway, so uh, as I finish this last one up here, it will be time to get to the painting. And I actually, I'm just going to talk while I'm putting this on. Actually, in taking the blue painter's tape off, uh, if whatever tape you decide to use, um, if, if you do it this way, I mean, you don't even have to do it this way. You can just do it on a regular piece of paper. But if you want to experiment like I did, um, take it off slowly um, I I pulled a little bit of my watercolor paper off by uh, being a little too anxious to paint I guess <laughs> okay so let me get this one finished up and then it is time to paint let's do it I also thought I would just quickly show you my little basket system I keep all of my um, products for creating pastel surfaces in one basket and it's just really handy for me to have them all in one place so I don't have to go hunt them down when I get in a, a mode um, to make some pastel surfaces. And I also recommend if you're going to do it, um, do them in big batches. I mean, go ahead and make a, 
uh, take a dedicated time period of a few hours or a day or whatever and make you a whole bunch of surfaces because one of the best things to do when you're painting is just when you get in the mood to paint just to be able to paint and not to have to slow down and or go oh let me make a surface and so the more you can have things accessible and ready it's just going to make things better oh i like these little uh containers i buy uh, at the grocery store just little tupperware containers if you have extra of something mixed up um you can just save them um, for for a pretty good period of time anyway and this is just the place in my studio where i keep a lot of things i like the basket system because i can pull things out in groups if i need them and uh, i like things open like this where i can see what they are so just thought i'd share that i also thought i would show you a bit of the surfaces a little more close up especially this micaceous iron oxide now you can see that sparkle right and it actually does have a very nice gritty surface to it and here they all are and i'll just uh, i'll speed this up and show you how not to take the tape off So as a recap, here they are again. I'm not going to read them all, but if you wanted to pause this and check them out, you could. Yay, painting time. These are the seven resulting paintings from the different surfaces that I used. They're not in order here. And you notice there's only seven. I mentioned one of them I chose not to even do a painting on, so um, we will wait to find that out. Now I wanted to share my resource that I used for these images, for the reference images. There's a great site called, it used to be called paintmyphoto.com, now it's pmp-art.com. And you know, it's really great, like now I didn't want to hunt and find the perfect reference image, so uh, I just went to this site, I typed in poppies, I found all these different paintings or photographs of poppies, and what happens is artists, uh, photographers, and artists use this site, but photographers upload their images, allowing you to use them copyright free. So this was just a really neat way to find images rather quickly. Here are the first four surfaces that I created. And you may have already noticed that I've turned this upside down. I'm gonna start working on the first one I did, which is the blue watercolor one there that I used clear gesso on top of the watercolor. The reason I turned it upside down is I didn't wanna cut these up right away. And I, if I had the, this one at the top and I start painting with pastels, the pastel dust would fall and would fall on whatever was beneath it. So I turned it upside down so that won't happen. Now I'm just using a piece of willow charcoal um, I just keep this little stick of charcoal handy because, um, you know, you don't really need to do a whole lot of sketching, mostly with landscape um, paintings or especially simple ones like these. So I just kind of sketch things out a little bit and um, and then just get to work. And I don't I don't even do a lot of sketching on any of these. And after using the willow charcoal, uh, all I'm basically going to do is get my darker values in. And for that, I'm gonna be using a, just a, a little, I break my pastels often, but a little broken piece of a new pastel. Again, in new pastel. And uh, they are great, they're harder, and they're really great for kind of sketching things in in the beginning, or uh, getting down um, like your, uh, your darker values. So, and this should, this is all very sketchy. And uh, a lot of times we don't loosen up enough when we paint. And that, I think that's what's really great about uh, doing quick little studies like this and giving yourself a time limit on finishing them. Uh, it really kind of breaks you out of your, your um, I don't know, tightness, you know, that we often have as artists. I'm using a combination of pastels here, and I'm not going to do a whole lot of commentary on creating the paintings uh, because this is more about the surfaces. And uh, so I won't go in necessarily into all the different brands of pastels, but I'm using a combination of soft and hard pastels. Uh, but mostly I want to share here that this is, again, to recap, the clear gesso that I applied on top of just some watercolor painted on watercolor paper. And the clear gesso indeed uh, does have enough grit to work quite well for uh, pastels to have something to hold on to. 
Um, so now again, I'm, I'm getting in more of my values. I'm making kind of a trail that will lead your eye through it. And I'm not sharing the reference images on here because uh, paint my photo. I think they have something to where I'm not supposed to really share that. I just shared that little video at the beginning there just to show you guys how awesome it is to use this site. Um, and there's all kinds of different um, places you can find free reference images. I find the best thing is to get your own photos. I know we always can't do that. Um, again, I don't even live where there are many poppies. So, you know, sometimes these things come in handy. And especially for an example like this, um, it just made a, a quick and easy resource for me to find some, some photos to work from quickly. But I actually um, would suggest, um, whether it's paint my photo or something else, a lot of times working from thumbnails, that thumbnails are just the small image that you see. Like when I pulled up a search for poppies, there were all these little like one by one or one by two um, squares, um, actually even smaller than that. Um, and if you just focus on doing a lot of little paintings like that, again, give yourself a time limit and just work from the little thumbnails. I think you'll find that uh, it frees you up as an artist and you'll you'll definitely improve. None of us practice enough, or I shouldn't say none of us. I know I know a few artists who happen to be great because they did practice a lot. I need to get more quick practicing in. And I will say this was a lot of fun for me. I mean, even though it was a lot of work um, after getting all of these done and doing the paintings, I mean, I was in the zone. I put me on some uh, good music. I like music with no words when I paint, um, either uh, praise and worship music or just some good instrumental music. I like classical and um, anything that's kind of ethereal. So um, it's, man, I tell you what, painting is just like heaven sometimes in our crazy chaotic world. <laughs> and I know you guys relate because I see your work. I see your comments. I'm so thankful for all of you on our YouTube channel and in our Facebook group. It's, we truly are like a family. It's amazing, isn't it? We've got people from all over the world and we all relate to each other. And uh, it's such a beautiful experience where nobody's getting all uh, fussy and caught up on silly things we shouldn't even, you know, argue about. <laughs> anyway, I, I love our group. I really do. Now, that's just a piece of pipe foam insulation. <clears throat> I wanted to kind of blend those trees in the background to make them appear more in the distance. Uh, things do tend to get blurrier in the distance. Not that you always have to blend them, but I wanted to in this particular case. But as you can see, I am adding quite a bit of layers on this uh, uh, one coat of clear gesso on top of the watercolor paper. Um, and um, and just so you know, I mean, some people are like, well, is, is all of this archival, meaning is it going to last a long time? Are these products that don't have any, uh, they're acid free or whatever. And everything I've used on all of these products, I believe all of them are totally acid free and um, I've had people ask me well can you sell these paintings if they're on watercolor paper instead of pastel paper absolutely you know I prepare all of mine before I ship them uh, I put them uh, I put a backing of a foam board on it and put it in a little clear bag uh, that's a good site to get the little clear bags that was too light <laughs> to darken it up um, there's a great site uh, I think it's clearbags.com where you can get the different sizes if you work in standard sizes you can get like um, um, five by seven, four by six, eight by 10, um, 11 by 14, all these different sizes of bags that you can just slip your little pastel paintings down into with a foam board in the back cut to fit. And, um, then it's just ready to go either ready to store, ready to ship to a customer, um, ready to take to a little art fair where you might uh, people might want to actually handle them and it's very safe to do so. I do have a video where I um, show you how to do this process. Um, but anyway, as you can see, looky there, it's all coming together and it's again just using clear gesso. I didn't put the prices of everything uh, on here, but you can so easily check that. Um, great places to find uh, pastel related products. Of course, a lot of you use dickblick.com. There's one called jerrysartorama.com. And I always like to highly recommend Dakota Art. Um, Dakota Art has been so awesome to be generous enough to donate our prizes in our Monet Cafe art group. And Dakota Art, uh, just so you know, it's really everything pastel you could ever want. I mean, you can get such an education of just going onto their site. They've got some awesome products. Um, all, I think maybe all these products that I've shared in this video, I'd have to check that out. Um, but uh, 
they the people there are great too um the girl i've been working with is just awesome so all right so let me finish this one up and we'll move to the next one Right, that was so much fun now I've moved my paper again to where this one's on the bottom I decided for a vertical format and this is the surface where I have uh, mixed regular gesso that doesn't have any grit with what did I use uh, gouache I, I mix the um, kind of like the uh, gouache that has a little sparkle in it that didn't really sparkle in this and then I added the dry pumice to add the grit to it so we've got regular gesso whatever tint however you want to tint it and dry pumice added and I really liked the surface so this is uh, the first two that I did is like the questions I get a lot the difference between clear gesso and regular gesso and once again, um, the regular gesso has no grit. You have to add your own grit, which I did here. And it worked great, okay? So if you wanna get regular gesso and um, get you some dry pumice, uh, that would work great. The only disadvantage I would find to the this method versus the clear gesso is if you wanna do a watercolor underpainting uh, to begin with, your regular gesso, this example here, it's not clear so you're going to kind of make your watercolor underpainting more um, it won't show up as much it's going to be more uh, opaque and not show through or be translucent through the clear gesso so you know whatever method you want to use um, but I really liked the surface it, it worked great um, I, I'm still a fan of the clear gesso for one it's it's one less step to do too you can and you've got the like again the, I said the uh, the fact that it's clear um, helps for different applications. So anyway, um, once again, here we go, more painting and more music.
Okay, another fast and fun painting. And by the way, I'm towards the end of these, I'm speeding them up more than I normally do, uh, just because this is more about the, the surfaces than it is the paintings. But this is the one that I love. Um, and when I make these, I usually make them in big batches. It's the one that I used um, the example of Rita Kirkman. Uh, she uses the uh, golden pumice gel one-to-one -one ratio with another golden product, the golden fluid. This is a long color name, quinacridone nickel azo gold. Refer back to the beginning when I give all the information on these. But you one-to-one, -one, you can mix the fine pumice gel. Really, you could mix it with anything. You don't have to use that particular uh, golden fluid uh, acrylic paint. But I love that color. That's a gorgeous color. So, um, so this is just those two products mixed together, one-to-one -one ratio, applied to a board, watercolor paper, whatever surface you want and um, this works great. Uh, it is not quite as gritty as even the like the clear gesso. It, it feels a little finer to the touch, um, but I, I find that it still takes a decent amount of layering, and um, it has sufficed for many of my paintings. I've used this technique quite a bit, and again, I like to make them in big quantities. I like to um, just take a, a day and um, I actually, th this method is not so easy to do on big surfaces. So uh, sometimes you can take a, a big piece of something and, and create your surface and then cut it. But for this process, I typically cut my sizes before I apply the product. It begin, uh, again, because like I said in the beginning of this, that it dries kind of quickly. So it's better not to work on a big old huge um, piece of watercolor paper or board or whatever. Um, but I love this one. This one worked great. Here we go again with more painting and music. Time to move on to number four. I wish I could paint this fast in real life. Actually, no, I like the process. And this one is the uh, fourth one I created. It is the Art, Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer. This color that I'm using is called Australian Gray, but they make all kinds of different colors of this. And I really love this. I forget sometimes to use this product. Um, it has enough grit. If you're, you're probably familiar with Color Fix, um, the, the paper, Art Spectrum sells the, it already made on the paper, but this is a way you can do it yourself. I haven't done the cost comparison um, on these versus the actual paper, but um, I'm fairly certain it's quite a bit cheaper to just buy the product and make it yourself. Plus, sometimes I love playing around with this. I, I've done this with this particular product where I've gotten like a stiff bristle brush with a second tongue twister and um, kind of make a real textured surface um, instead of the smooth, even strokes. And often I really like a textured surface like that. It, it lends towards a more uh, impressionistic feel. So enjoy this painting number four.
Okay, so that was all four paintings done on the first piece of watercolor paper, and now I'm moving on to the second batch. This is the surface that was the acrylic ink combined with golden pastel ground. And this golden product has grit in it, and I just used the acrylic ink to tint it. The one right next to it that's the green, that is the, um, I think I used watercolor mixed with golden acrylic ground for pastels. Now, that was confusing to me. Golden sent me these products as samples, and um, it was confusing. I wasn't sure what the difference was. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference. I put them in my fingers and um, felt them. And I, I think this one, the golden pastel ground, was a bit grittier, a bit more gritty <laughs> than the other one. But they bur both worked great, okay? So you might want to get uh, small uh, containers. And when you try this, if you've never tried it before, you may want to get one of the smaller uh, containers of these just to sample and play around with and uh, see which ones you like the best too. Now, this is an instance where I let the color of the original surface kind of dictate my mood and my choices rather than the reference photo alone. I used the reference photo for the composition. It was a nice composition, but it was primarily, um, if I recall, uh, more of just like green field, red poppies, blue sky, you know, kind of more of your typical scene. But I had that beautiful pink uh, surface underneath. And when I added that yellow for the sky, I thought, let me just add this golden yellow for the sky. And, and by not applying it um, all over the surface, I allow a little bit of that pink to show through. And so I, I just made that, you know, kind of a glowing nice sky from that. So I let that dictate my choices for the rest of the painting. And uh, I just wanted to keep that pink glow underneath, so I, I let those distance fields be a little bit pink, kind of reflecting uh, what's in the sky. And then I decided, because I've got kind of like some purples in the shadows beneath the grasses and in that um, those trees to the right there, I decided a complement to purple is that beautiful orange. So instead of the poppies being red, I thought the orange would just be more uh, a more beautiful choice for this color composition that I have going on here. And see that? Oh, I had that really bright orange pastel. I'm not sure what brand that is. That mm, might be a unison. Um, but anyway, and then see that teal that I'm adding there? See how that just made those orange colors pop? And I was literally just having fun playing with color at this point. And that's the neat thing about doing a lot of smaller paintings like this is you loosen up and you really start to have fun. You know, kind of like when you were a kid and you got a big old box of crayons with all the colors and you didn't sit around and, and say, oh, I got to make the perfect picture. I don't know. Well, maybe some of us did. <laughs> but for the most part, we just had fun and we enjoyed the freedom of creating. And um, of course, we do have to learn the rules. We do have to get better. We have to learn our tools, which is what I'm trying to help you guys do here. But when all of that starts to come together, the process starts to become like magic. So I encourage you to keep practicing. Try doing a lot of small, non-serious pieces like this, and you'll find yourself playing again and actually having fun. This one will be painting number six, and it is the one where I used golden acrylic ground for pastels. I'm pausing because I'm having to remember it. And I combined it with watercolor straight from the tube, uh, and obviously this pretty green color. Another instance here of where I let the color of the surface dictate the mood and my color choices. I loved this green so much that I wanted to make the sky green, like a greenish yellow. And yes, you can do that because um, as many of you know, if you've watched a lot of my videos, value, meaning the lightness or the darkness of a color, is more important than color. So if you get the value right, you can get a little crazy and fun with color. And so that's what I did here. The original uh, reference image was not in any way the, uh, these colors. It, was, it did not have a green sky and it did not have the color of the flowers that I end up using here. And I also wanted to um, comment that I didn't find a lot of difference between this surface and the previous one that you can kind of see a little bit of it there to the left. Um, being that, well, they were both the golden 
um, pastel ground to the left and the golden acrylic four pastels. Um, when I started working on them, there wasn't that much of a difference. So um, I'm not sure if any of you guys want to comment if you've used any of these products and you found a difference, but um, I think for me, I would order one or the other. I don't think it would really matter. Now for the uh, composition or the color palette I'm choosing here is because that lime green is kind of dominant still I'm letting it show through I thought the flowers would be pretty now, kind of a compliment to the lime green is more like a magenta purple and so I put down the deep purple as a base for the flower and then um, kind of layered it with some of those magenta colors I also liked that uh, periwinkle blue um, kind of mixed in there and, and by the way uh, this was my most um, extreme departure from the original reference photo and what was interesting to me is that when I shared the paintings on in our Facebook group Monet Cafe art group this painting got more likes than any of the other ones uh, and I think maybe it is because it was uh, getting very creative with color all right time to begin painting number seven now you may have noticed that i skipped one um, this should be eight this was the eighth one the surface that i created so now if you heard me at the beginning of the video there was one i chose not to even paint on that was the number seven and just so you know that one that i did not paint on was the golden coarse molding paste it was just too darn gritty and um it actually just was so thick and pasty um i think it's a product that you use to mix with acrylics to somehow get maybe that really thick textured look i'm not sure um but i didn't paint on it so this one is actually the seventh painting but it's on the eighth surface and that surface and you if you remember it's the one that has a little shimmer to it is the another product by golden micaceous iron oxide and uh, I love this. It's really neat. It, it causes you to get a little creative. I was um, actually kind of getting in a rush by the time I had to do this last one. I had some other chores I had to get to. Oh my goodness, I would rather just stay in my studio and paint all day. I know you guys can relate. Um, but anyway, I chose this uh, little image. It was of a single, I couldn't tell if it was a rose or a poppy, but I decided to kind of make it like a rose and uh, it had this stormy sky but what i liked about the composition is that everything seemed to be reaching up towards something you couldn't see i mean the clouds were moving in that direction the flower was reaching in that direction and it was just really a, a neat composition so um it's it's very textured the surface but i like that and i also happen to like working on darker surfaces um it causes you to um, make different color choices I think I mean all the rules are still the same with regard to value uh, but you've already got a, a medium value on your surface so um, your darks and light choices are going to be a little bit different um, but anyway so enjoy this last little one I do if I had to rate let me think at the very end of this I'll give a rating as to what my favorites were I do like this one though all right enjoy the music a little bit of some of the stages of this one um, basically because my video is getting too long if I get anywhere kind of close to an hour video um, out here in the country where I live I have really limited Wi-Fi and uh, it just takes too long to upload so um, but anyway I wanted to go ahead and finish this little one up and then share you my um, share with you my opinion on all of them uh, but to recap, I wanted to show you again the one where it was using the coarse 
uh, molding paste, and uh, I just it didn't even didn't even decide to use it. Now, once again, these are all of the different products that I used on the watercolor paper. Let's take a look at the paintings. This one would be, these aren't in order, but this would be the number one, which was the clear gesso painted on top of uh, watercolor paper where I had already painted some kind of like a teal blue. This next one is where I use the Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer which works great. I love this product. Again, you can buy it in different colors. It's awesome. By the way, this one was number three on the watercolor paper um, that I used. Now this next one is the number four, which is, I call it the Rita Kirkman technique. It's the golden fine pumice gel um, mixed with a tint. And the tint is the golden fluid acrylic, the um, quinacridone nickel azo, azo gold. <laughs> such a long name all right so now this one would be number five it is the golden pastel ground and I added the acrylic ink that pretty uh, bright pink to it it paled it out when I mixed it together of course but I love that one I'm definitely going to use more of that product all right this one would be number six which is the golden acrylic ground and I added watercolor again uh, the pastel ground and the acrylic ground for pastel uh, seemed very similar to me. I really liked both of these products. All right, now this one was actually number two, which was the regular gesso, and I added dry pumice and a tint of gouache. If you recall, I skipped number seven, the coarse, the golden coarse molding paste, and I went on to the golden micaceous iron oxide. I love this surface. It's really cool. So in all in all, let me give you kind of my rating. So out of all of these, first, if I had to pick those that performed most like a already pre-made pastel paper, such as UART or Color Fix or so many other brands, um, I would say that number three, the Art Spectrum with the Color Fix Primer, it really does um, come out more like a pastel paper. Um, then I would all, uh, also add to that number five and six, the golden pastel ground, where I mixed the acrylic ink. Again, you can mix whatever you want. And the golden acrylic ground with watercolor. Those felt most like a pastel surface. My next personal favorite with regards to final results is I just really love number four, the Rita Kirkman method with the golden fine pumice gel and I, where I add the quinacridone nickel azo gold. I just love that color. Um, but the gold fine pumice gel works well, but keep in mind, it doesn't allow for as much layering as the previous ones I just mentioned. Okay, so the next on my list, um, if you go up to the first two, number one and two, uh, I prefer number one, the watercolor and clear gesso. It's just easy, it's quick, and it really does give you a lot of layering. For that choice, I think I would say the golden micaceous iron oxide uh, would be my next choice, and then I would uh, conclude with the regular gesso and the dry pumice added. Those two also work great. Um, they're just not my more of my go-to methods. And last on the list, of course, is the one I didn't even do, which was the golden coarse molding paste. Just not, in my opinion, not great for making your own pastel surface. So there you have it. I hope this uh, video tutorial demonstration was very beneficial and helpful for you guys try some of these please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and you'd like to learn more about pastels and art in general I share a lot on this channel uh, also feel free to comment add your suggestions and also join our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook such a great warm happy place encouraging and uh, instructional uh, educational so much to learn there so keep creating beautiful things and as always happy happy painting